In July of 1997, a novel called Bridget Jones's Diary took Great Britain by storm. Selling more than one million copies, it won the British Book of the Year Award. In addition to dominating the bestseller list, it also dominated the conversation. It is the diary of a fictional 30-something career woman navigating the perils of modern single life. Now, Bridget Jones is coming to America, and I'm pleased to have on the program the author, Helen Fielding. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Um, coming to America. Now, Christopher Hitchens, well-known American columnist who writes for Vanity Fair and other publications, wrote an open letter to Bridget saying, don't come. Right? That's right. It was published in the Evening Standard. What did he say? He said, um, don't go to America. They won't like you. They won't understand irony and self-deprecation, and you'll have a horrid time. And your response was, what in the world is Woody Allen all about? Exactly, right. exactly, yeah. Tell and me, go ahead. Certainly from the response I've had from women just in the last couple of days, saying just the same things as British women do about the book. What is that? Um, they say, they laughed out loud on the elevator. They say, Bridget Jones, that's me. But most of all, they say, I have that same problem with my pantyhose of finding them scrunched up into a great rope-like object with mm. bits of tissue stuck in them. It seems to be the pantyhose which right. links the two continents. Let's get at this. Uh, let me Tell me a little bit about you. Well, I was, when I wrote Bridget Jones, a journalist, I'd written one novel which was set in Africa in a refugee camp. A serious novel? Yeah. Well, it was a satire. It was okay. half funny, okay. half serious. Um, and I was working on my second novel, which was also a satire. Um, the Independent asked me to write a column as myself about single life in the city, but I thought that was too exposing and embarrassing. So I said, I'll make up this overblown, exaggerated, comic character. And of course what's happened is everyone thinks she's me anyway, yes. so it's, it's worse. But I never thought that it would last. I thought, I didn't tell anyone it was me, because I was quite embarrassed about it being about such a tiny thing. So they didn't know that Bridget Jones was Helen Fielding? That you were the, the author. editor knew, but no one else did. No one else. No. Why did you finally tell them? Because people started calling in saying they liked the column. So not being the deepest of people, at that point I said, "It's me. It's me." <laughs> <laughs> you said, "See that great column? Me." <laughs> me, me, me. You could have carried on a great guessing game for a long time. Well, funny. Who enough, is Bridget, Bridget Jones? Jones? I never signed the column, still don't. And it was only when the book came out that um, people realized that yeah. it was me. I know you hate the question, but it has to be you in part, because, I mean, uh, it, it's not all you, but in part it has to be driven by your own sensibilities, doesn't it? Of course it does, yes. But what tends to happen is I take a bit of myself, a bit of what I see around me, and also friends are really good at ringing in with stories um, that I can use in the column. I had a friend that called in the other day and said that he had thrown away his mobile phone with the newspapers. Um, but he lived in an apartment block, so they had lots of big communal dustbins. He had to get another friend to ring the phone to find out which dustbin it was in. And of course, he was waiting for this to happen, and someone walked past and said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm waiting for the dustbin to ring. <laughs> so that ended up in the column, only it was Bridget with the man of her dreams walking past. And that's kind of how it works. You get the germ of an idea and then exaggerate. Now, what's Bridget like? Well, Bridget is... One of the things I like most about her is that she's eternally optimistic. She's basically on a doomed quest for self-improvement. Mm. Maybe should I read a couple yes, of her bigger. New Year's resolutions and okay. then you'll get an idea of what she wants. She says, I will stop smoking, drink no more than 14 alcohol units a week, go to the gym three times a week, not merely to buy a sandwich, Form functional relationship with responsible adult and learn to program a VCR. I will not sulk about having no boyfriend, but develop inner poise and authority and sense of self as a woman of substance, complete without boyfriend, as best way to obtain boyfriend. So those are the sort of things she's uh, aiming for. It so never she works. Wants, she wants to lose weight. She wants to look better. She wants to find her Prince Charming. Uh, she's like so many 30-ish women that you know that are not married. Exactly, and also it turns out many who are married and who are maybe 70, maybe 20, and men too. It's sort of about the way that women feel that they have to be perfect in so many areas, and they sort of feel that they've got to whiz from the gym to the board meeting to the elaborate supper that they've cooked for 12 people. 
And all that happens is that when the guests arrive, they find themselves still in their underwear with wet hair and one foot in a pan of mashed potato. And it's the gap between what we're expected to be and how we really are. I think that's what appeals to people. And what do you say to those people who don't find it appealing because they say uh, it is a disservice to women to suggest that all they care about is self-improvement and finding a, the right man, that in fact they're really interesting women are about interesting things. They're about their work, they're about their friends, they're about all the things that uh, enrich life, not just the pursuit well, I say of that the if, perfect man. If we as women can't laugh at our weaknesses, then we haven't got very far as feminists. And I also point out that my first novel was set in a refugee camp, but nobody bought that one. Is this going to be a television character or a film character? It's going to be a film. It's going to be made into a film by the makers of Four Weddings and a Funeral. And we're at the beginning of the production process now. And who will be Bridget Jones? I don't know. I see a lot of women in the streets and around who I think would make very good Bridget's. I saw one the other day in the gym who was sitting on a machine for really quite a long time, reading a magazine and making no attempt whatsoever to exercise. And I thought, you could do it. But I don't know, I think... Bridget would not be exercising? <laughs> Bridget she'd would be go there, to but the not gym, exercise. but she'd feel that then she'd achieved her goal. She'd by actually there. got there, yeah. Um, and then she would get distracted by something more pleasurable than uh, actually working the horrible now, Is machine. Bridget happy? She's like many of us. She's a mixture of happy some days and unhappy other days. But she's always optimistic. And when it all goes wrong, she goes out with her friends. She drinks too much Chardonnay. She does a bit of feminist ranting. And then she goes, oh, never blow in mind. And then the next morning, she's got a new plan, be it Buddhism or Feng Shui or inner poise. Something that will make her better or make her, she thinks, more attractive? Just better. And I think maybe the thing that the book's saying, if anything, and I've only realized what the book's saying since it's come out and everybody has told me, is that you don't what have... What does that mean? You've only realized what the book is saying because you had to have feedback from the readers to know what it was that resonated with them. Yeah. I just wrote it quite unselfconsciously initially to make people laugh. Yeah. That was all it was this there This is for. a funny thing about Bridget. Take it for what it is, a light little story. Exactly. And since it's come out in all these different countries, it's come out in about, or coming out in about 22 countries, then you get all these reviews and analysis about what it stands for and what it means. And I think, oh, yeah, that's what I meant. But not um, in Italy, where someone said it was a study of existential despair. I was flattered, but I thought that was taking it too far. The column continues. The column continues. Now, have you changed the column because of the success of the book? No, I don't Has think so. Has success done Helen well? I think it gets more difficult to find material as time goes on. But things still do happen. I mean, the other day I was walking to work in a very short skirt with a coat on top, and yes. I realized the skirt had ridden right up here to my waist. Mm. And so I pulled it down. But then I thought, well, if that was Bridget, she would not realise. And she would walk into work straight into a meeting and take her coat off and be wearing no skirt. <laughs> so there's sort of enough things just in the natural fabric of life that uh, keep the column going. When, I don't know, when, when you think about her and you think about you, everybody who knows you, all of your friends who are journalists, know that whatever they say to you becomes fodder for your column. Well, I'm quite careful, actually, with people. They all know that I'm doing it. Um, so they know everything is on the record? No, the opposite, really. They know I won't use it as a general rule of thumb without checking. I've got two very good girlfriends, rather like the girlfriends in here, yeah. called Tracy and Sharon. Right. And then there's Tom. And there's Tom, the gay friend. And um, actually, all my gay friends lay claim to being Tom, but only the nice bits. But I... I am conscious. I do think you have a responsibility to the people in your life. Um, not to tell their secrets. Not to do anything which would embarrass them or hurt them or pinch their jokes. So I do really try to notice when I'm using something and check. What's the connection between this book and Pride and Prejudice? Another book. Um, I simply stole the plot. <laughs> <of Pride and Prejudice. laughs> That's it. 
I thought it had been well well, market research. Going in to the, to, you stole the plot going in? No, I wrote the diary and then when the publisher said they wanted Bridget instead of my Robert Ernest second novel, I didn't want it to be episodic. I wanted it to be a proper page turner. A diary? A diary? A diary, but also a novel with a beginning and a middle oh, and an yeah. end. Because I think part of the reason it's sold so well is not just what it's about, but the type of book it is. Personally, I don't have much time to read, as most people don't. And I like books which are not pulp fiction and not too heavy going, so you have to yeah. read each sentence four times. But they've got a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah. You turn the page, they make you laugh, and they're about real life. They've got their roots in reality. So I needed a good plot, and that's why I chose Pride and Prejudice. I thought she wouldn't mind. Uh, but would there be a character like Bridget in Jane Austen's time? No, I don't think if there was, she would be written about. I certainly don't think she'd be drinking and smoking unless she was a gutter floozy. What, how has all this changed your life? Well, I've become a lot busier. Um, when things go wrong or something humiliating happens, instead of feeling totally humiliated and sad, I now think, hurrah, I can put it in the column. You love success. Um, it's great, actually. I've been writing for a long time, and I never expected it with this. It's fantastic. Yeah. Is there any downside to it? Um, I think the effect it has on my character. This morning I went into... Um, Your personal character. Yeah. I went into CBS this morning, and there was a big crowd of autograph hunters waiting. For Bridget so Jones. I, I thought, I must be gracious and modest. And then I noticed they were all looking over my shoulder and Bob Newhart was coming in behind me. <laughs> and that was when I realised my character was ruined forever. <laughs> Bridget Jones' Diary, a novel by Helen Fielding. Back in a moment. Stay with us.